Welcome to Snap Circuits Best Practices. Today, I'll be helping you identify the basic parts of your Snap Circuits kit, as well as giving you some basic do's and don'ts to keep in mind when using your Snap Circuits in your classroom. Let's get started. So Snap Circuits are a great way to learn the basics of electricity. The components are colored, labeled, and easily snapped together. Here's an overview of all the parts, which you can also find on page two of the instruction manual that comes with your Snap Circuits. At first glance, it can be a little bit overwhelming, so let's separate these components into different categories. Our first category is power sources. You can probably tell by the name, but these components will be providing electricity to your circuit. Your snap circuit should have one of these, a battery holder. These should be able to take two AA batteries. You might also have this yellow component. This is called an AC snap which should also come with a wall mount AC adapter. This is an AC power supply that you can use to plug into a power outlet to use as your power source, instead of using the battery holder. All you have to do is use the component and plug in the wall mount and then plug the wall mount into an outlet. Up next, we have snap wires. So snap wires are used to transfer electricity from one point to another within your circuit. When using snap wires, you'll be creating a path for electricity to flow throughout your circuit. It's important that you're mindful of the path you're creating using these components, so be sure to always follow where the electricity flows when it leaves the power source. Now, let's move on to switches. Switches can be used within your snap circuit to control the flow of electricity within your circuit. Your snap circuits kit should come with two switches that you can choose from. The one you see on top is called a slide switch, and the one on bottom is called a press switch. Let's start with the slide switch. It works kind of like a light switch. You turn it on, and electricity flows through. You turn it off, electricity is cut off at that point. With the press switch, it's kind of like a power button. You push it once, electricity flows through. You push it again, electricity is cut off at that component. These switches can be triggered to stop and continue the flow of electricity throughout your circuit. These are useful for turning your circuits on and off, as well as controlling where the electricity in your circuit travels to. Our last category will be circuit loads. So circuit loads includes a variety of different components within your snap circuits kit. What they all have in common is that they all require electricity to function, and what they do depends on the component you're using. It is very important that every single circuit that you build within your classroom has some type of circuit load connected to it, so that you are not wiring your electricity to flow from the power supply back into itself. Doing so will create something called a short circuit, which can damage your equipment. For the last part of this video, we'll be covering some do's and don'ts to keep in mind when using snap circuits within your classroom. Make sure that every circuit that you create in the classroom has some type of load for the power to supply. This can be the fan, the motor, or a speaker. When creating a circuit, make sure that you're always using the switch component. This is to ensure that you can control the flow of electricity throughout your circuit and turn it on and off when you want to. Always make sure that your batteries are disconnected from your circuit until you're completely done building it. This also goes for the AC snap component. Make sure the component is not plugged into the wall or supplying power to your circuit until you're completely done and ready to test the circuit. If you notice a component in your circuit is getting too hot, the first thing you want to do is remove the power supply. That means taking out the batteries from the battery holder or unplugging your AC port from the wall. Double check the wiring on your circuit before turning it on. Make sure that it goes from your power supply to some type of load and eventually back to your power supply. Our first and probably most important don't is creating short circuits. A short circuit can occur when you create a connection from one side of the power supply to the other without having the current go through a load. If I were to turn on the circuit I built on the left, the current would travel from the battery right back into itself. No electricity would be used by any load, and this would fry the battery pretty quickly. Do not leave a circuit unintended when it is turned on. Always turn it off before you walk away. Do not touch the motor and fan when it is turned on. The fan should only be plastic, so it's not going to really hurt you, but you might risk damaging the fan or damaging the motor by touching it. Always turn it off before you plan on disassembling. 
Do not leave any components connected to each other when cleaning up. Make sure everything is disconnected from each other and from the board. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching this best practices video. I hope that you and your students have a ton of fun when using snap circuits in your classroom.